One of the classic labs in high school has you mixing a solid into a known amount of water in a styrofoam cup and measuring whether the temperature goes up or down relative to where it started. Using the temperature change, you can figure out how much heat was either released or absorbed, and then you can get heat per mole or enthalpy as long as you know how much solid you dissolved. We're going to run through one of those calculations now. We have 14 grams of ammonium nitrate being dissolved in 25 milliliters of water. The initial temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. And after the mixing, the temperature has gone down to 23.10 degrees Celsius. It's still about 25 milliliters of that solution. The, the volume would have changed a little, but it was 25 milliliters of water to start with. So let's get down to business here. Let's figure out how much heat was either released or absorbed in this process. Amount of heat, Q, is measured with MC delta T. M here is the mass of the thing that is heating up. That's water for us. And it's 25 milliliters, which counts as 25 grams, because water is one gram per milliliter around room temperature. C is the specific heat capacity of water. That's 4.184 units of joules per gram degree Celsius. Notice that the grams here match as a unit. And then we need the delta T, or the change in temperature. Now, I actually don't have that. Delta T is your T final minus your T initial. My final temperature was 23.10 degrees Celsius. My initial temperature was 25.00 degrees Celsius. When I subtract those, I end up with negative 1.90. It is negative because the temperature went down. Huh? So I'm going to plug that in here, 1.90 degrees Celsius, water or energy heat has escaped or been absorbed from the water and that's what caused its temperature to go down. 25 times 4.184 times 1.9, oh sorry, negative 1.9 gives me a Q of negative 198.74. The grams cancel, the degree Celsius cancel, and the amount of energy that I'm left with here is in joules. Okay, so what that means is that dissolving this many grams of that solid required 198.74 joules of energy to leave the water. That's because that amount of energy was required or absorbed by the solid in order to help break its bonds. Now the formula I use for delta H is generally negative Q over N. Now that's because the Q you're measuring is usually for the surroundings, in this case the water, and the delta H you're calculating is for the thing that's actually doing the reacting, the system. Some teachers might want you to show that explicitly. Q system equals negative Q surroundings. Negative, negative 198 cancels to positive 198. You'll see a shakedown in my calculation as well, but you know, do what your teacher says, right? This Q is this Q here. The surroundings gave up 198 joules. What was the N the number of moles? Oh man, that's actually going to take a little bit of extra work. I need to convert grams to moles, so I need the molar mass of ammonium nitrate. Nitrogen weighs 14 each. Hydrogen weighs 1 each, and there are four of them here. Then I have another nitrogen, and I have three oxygens, and each oxygen weighs 16 each, according to my periodic table. 14 plus 1 times 4 plus another 14 times 3, or added to 3 sixteens, gives me a molar mass of 80.0 grams per mole. So my number of moles, mass divided by molar mass, mass. Now this is mass of the solid that was dissolved. The M here was for the mass of water because the water is the thing that was changing temperature. 
Here, it's how much reacted. This is now moles of the solid. 14.00 grams divided by 80.0 grams per mole. Mr. Calculator can help me with that. 0.175 moles. That's the end that's going to go there. Okay. Delta H for the reaction here, which is the dissolving or enthalpy of solution for ammonium nitrate, is negative Q, and Q itself is already negative. So that's going to be negative, negative. It'll become positive. And I'm going to divide it by the number of moles. Let's do that on the calculator. I got negative, negative, 198.74. Oh, yeah, it is positive. Look at that. Divided by 0.175, that's 1135.66, and the units are joules per mole. Lots of teachers like this in kilojoules per mole, so I'm just going to divide by a thousand to do that conversion. And I'm going to be careful about my significant figures. These all had four significant figures, but when you did the subtraction of the temperatures, you had to keep two decimal places. That's how sig figs for addition and subtraction work. And this went down to just three significant figures. Even though you started with four each, the way they subtracted, you only got three digits of precision there. Which means I need three significant figures. One, two, three. That three happens to go up because what's after it is more than just a pure half. So I end up with 1.14, and remember I divided by 1,000 to convert this to kilojoules per mole. Now I don't think that's the actual enthalpy of dissolving for uh, ammonium nitrate. I made this up, right? But the process is what you're practicing here, right? You're using the water's temperature change and mass to get the Q, or amount of heat absorbed or released, you're using the initial mass of the thing you're dissolving to get moles, and then you can divide energy by moles to get kilojoules per mole, which is always how we measure enthalpy. Beautiful. Hopefully you followed along and were able to do that for your data. Thanks for being with me, and best of luck.